Welcome to CQ Blind Hams, your source for everything amateur related, tutorials, radio reviews, and so much more. Come on in and stay a while. Hello everybody, I'm Joe Boguist, N3AIN at Hotmail.com, welcoming you to Radio in the Dark, this time part 4 of the Kenwood TS590 tutorials. Okay, what we're going to do today is we're going to use the control software from Kenwood to control the radio from your computer and show you just how nice it is to go through the menus and all the settings and how nice it is that the Kenwood software will tell you what the menu does unlike just using the VGS one voice guide where that only tells you what the menu number is and what parameter the menu is set to if you use the software from Kenwood it tells you that but it also tells you what the menu is it's very important to know that of course because you don't want to change the setting on a menu if you only know what it's set to but not what the menu does so let's get started right away and I'll tell you what we're gonna do first I've already done this but what you're gonna need if you didn't already do this is you're gonna need two things um, if you're using a uh, USB cable to the computer and the radio you're gonna need the ARCP 590 software plus the virtual COM port driver for the radio if you're only using a DB9 serial cable you don't need the virtual COM port drivers but if you're using a newer computer that's four years old or newer it probably doesn't have a serial port on it so you're probably using a USB cable so what you want to do is go to the Kenwood site and to find that I used Google as my search engine and I went to the edit field and I just typed in Kenwood software and the first thing that came up in the search results was the one I entered on and actually I typed in Kenwood amateur software I think and the first thing that came up was the area where you can get all the software all the Kenwood rigs and you can of course go to the 590 software the first thing that came up in the 590 was the uh, uh, updates firmware updates uh, but you don't need that uh, probably if you do well, you can go ahead and do that but that's uh, for another chapter we're not going to go into how to update the radio at least probably not at all in this tutorial but anyway you go to the 590 software for the ARCP 590 and then you go to the virtual COM port drivers you download the both and install them and then you can run the radio from the computer so assuming you've already done that uh, let's turn the radio on with the computer and I'll show you how all this works start menu internet I'm going to the software now leaving menus folder view list view ARCP 590 okay I'm on it now I'm going to hit the enter key on my computer uh, by the way, I'm using JAWS as my screen reader, as you can tell. Power button. If you're using NVDA, this will work too, but I haven't tried it, I'm, but I'm sure it will. This software is very, very screen reader friendly. So let's hit the space bar on the power button and see if it turns the radio on. Connect button. There power button. Is. Power button. And the radio came on. Okay, now let's tab to the menus. Connect button. Menu functions, multi functions, menu functions, button. Now, uh, here they are. Now, I have to explain something. The menus are grouped in categories. It's really nice the way they did this with this software. Each category gives you the parameters that are all related to each other. For instance, well, you'll see what I mean. Let me just go through them and, and you'll see as I go through them this puts everything in a nice neat bundles so you can know what's going on multi functions button and what you want to do here first of all you have two things you have menu functions button menu functions and that will tell you all 87 menus 
Multifunctions button. Or you have multifunctions to get to that I tabbed once. Multifunctions mean functions that are controlling uh, more than one thing with the press of the same button. For instance, the button for the mic gain also gives you carrier level. So those are the multifunctions. Okay, we'll go through that later on. But first, we're going to go through all the menus. Menu functions button. Now, what we want here, we back tabbed back to that. Multifunctions button. Menu functions button. And we're going to hit enter on the menu functions. Multifunctions button. List view. Zero one. Operator interface. Okay, now what we want is what we landed on, the zero one, the operator interface. This is where it puts all the menus in groups that are related to each other. Okay, so let's tab and you'll see exactly what I mean. List view, zero, 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 display brightness. Okay, now the display brightness is menu triple zero. Now, what we're going to get when we tab here List view, four. is four. That's the default setting for the brightness of the display on the screen of the radio. Menu A, B, menu A, B, but okay. list view, four. Now, if you wanted to change that brightness, you would just arrow up or down to three or five or whatever. Three. Three, arrowing up. Four. Back arrowing down to four. I'm going to just leave it at four. You can even turn the turn this off if you can't see at all. But then if a sighted person needs to do anything with your radio, they won't be able to help you with it. Or if you don't want a sighted person to know what the heck's going on with the radio or be able to even control it, you can turn that off and they won't be able to do a thing with it. Uh, they'll be more blind than you will as a blind person with the thing. But... Um, I don't recommend you doing that because you might need help sometime with the radio. Anyhow, so that's four. Now let's t uh, let's uh, back tab. List view zero 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 display brightness. Now that's zero zero zero. Let's go to the next menu by arrowing down. Zero zero one backlight color. Zero zero one backlight okay, color. This is this is also in that first group because it deals with the display. Now we tab once more and see what the settings are there. List view, amber. Amber. See, that's the backlight color. Now, to change the color, again, we arrow up or down. Amber, one of two. Amber is the first one, so we can only arrow down. Green. Now, we can, we can change it to green. Amber. But amber is the default. I'll leave it at that. List view, zero, zero, 001, backlight color. We're going to back tab twice and go back to zero, zero, 001, backlight color. Now, here's uh, arrowing down to the second. Zero, zero, 002, panel key response for double functions. Zero, zero, 002, panel key response for double functions. This is another one in this same group. And if we tab twice, List view, medium. we find that that's set to medium. And again, to now change the parameter in this group, uh, in this this uh, particular setting in this group, we arrow up or down. I'm going to leave it where it is at medium. List view zero zero two panel key response for double functions. To get back to the uh, menu number, we backwards tabbed twice by hitting the shift tab twice. Okay, now let's arrow down to the next menu. There are there see now there 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 are no more in this group because that's all that that we have in this group as far as uh, it goes because they're the only ones in the group that are related uh, as the uh, the brightness uh, setting and the uh, color for the screen display okay so that's very very neatly put together like that that group is 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 uh, all by itself so to get to the next grouping when you land on operator interface by shift tabbing or ta um, uh, backwards or forwards, then you go down arrow to uh, the zero two volume three of twenty six. Uh, second one after the operator interface. Okay, uh, zero zero two volume three of twenty six. Zero two is volume, and of course that's three of twenty six. There are twenty six groups here in this menu setup. Now let's tab to see what the many things are in the volume grouping by tabbing to to it list view not selected zero zero three beep volume okay we have beep volume now these are all the all the the uh, settings for the volume group 
We have beep volume. Zero, zero, four, side tone volume. Arrowing down, we have the side tone volume. Zero, zero, five, message playback volume. Zero, zero, five, message playback volume. The next one is the message playback volume. Arrowing down. And those are the three. And again, to get to all these settings, to change them, all we have to do is tab. And when we're focused on each of them, whichever one we're focused on, then tabbing will get you to the uh, ability to change that particular one that you're focused on. I'll show you. Let's do four. I tabbed twice and it went to four. That's the volume setting for List view, zero, zero, five. Message playback volume. the message playback. Okay. Okay, so let's go to the next grouping now. List view, zero, two, volume. To get to that, we, again, shift tabbed in reverse. Zero, three, voice guide. Okay, zero, three is the voice guide. List view, not selected, zero, zero, six, voice guide volume. Voice guide volume. Now let's arrow down and see what else is in the voice guide grouping. Zero, zero, seven, voice guide speed. The voice guide speed, voice guide volume. Zero, zero, eight, voice guide language. Zero, voice zero, eight, language. voice guide language. Zero, zero, nine, auto announcement. Zero, and zero, nine, auto, auto announcement. And that's it for the voice guide. That's it for that grouping. Now again, to change the parameter in whichever setting you want to change in that grouping, you just tab to the area that you can arrow up or down to change it. Uh, tab twice forward. Let's do on. On. Now, I have to uh, give you a little tip on this voice guide. If you don't want the radio to be so chatty as far as the uh, VGS1, if you turn this voice guide off, it won't. the only thing it will tell you then is what frequency you're set to when you press the PF1 button or it will tell you the S meter reading if you press the PF2 button if you have it set to those but it won't tell you anything when you turn the radio on it won't tell you the mic gain settings when you press the button for the mic gain or it won't tell you the uh, keyer speed settings or the uh, setting for the um, noise blanker or any any of those things if you know what they are or you know how to change them without having to hear all that uh, chattiness, you can leave this turned off and you won't get as much interruption from the from the VGS-1 that way. List view, zero, zero, nine, auto okay. announcement. So at this point, <clears throat> I'm going to let JAWS do most of the talking now and just go down and show you all the rest of the menus and what they're named. So you can just listen to JAWS from now, and uh, I'll shut up and let JAWS speak. Okay, here we are now, 009 auto announcement, and now let's just turn this thing over to JAWS and let it speak. List view, 03, voice guide. 04, tuning, 04, tuning. 05, memory channel, 05, memory channel. 06, scan, 06, scan. 07, auto mode. 08 DSP function. 09 equalizer. 10 CW 10 CW. 11 FSK 11 FSK. 12 FM. 13 TX control. 14 transverter. 15 antenna tuner 15 antenna tuner. 16 linear amplifier 16 linear amplifier. 17 message 17 message. 18 split transfer. 19 TX inhibit 19 TX inhibit. 20 PC communication. 21 external audio input output 21 external audio input output 22 external accessory control 22 external accessory control 23 timer 23 timer 24 pfp 25 message and those are the 25 groups and again to get to the ability to change the setting in each group all you have to do is tab to that area and then you can arrow up or down to change the parameter in that particular setting in an, in the group. I hope I'm making it clear. I hope you understand. If you don't, just call me up or uh, write to me, I should say, and I will tell you how to do it. 
uh, I'll talk you through it. Well, let me just go to one of the other one of the groups again, and I'll, we'll just go through it just one more time. Let's let's go through let's go to one more and just go through it again. This is in case in, in case I'm not explaining this well, because sometimes I don't explain things as well as I think I could. Let's arrow to a group that we can change stuff in. Ted C W Ted C W. Let's see what's in C W. We have that highlighted. Now let's tab to the uh, to the group here. List view not selected zero three two electronic gear mode. Okay, there we go. This is one of the things we can change. Now let's arrow down. Zero three three key priority over playback. Zero three four C W T X pitch T X sight tone frequency. Zero three four C W T X pitch T X sight tone frequency. Again, this this selects each group in the CW area. Zero three five CW rise time. Zero three five CW rise time. Zero three six CW waiting. Zero three six CW waiting. And to change each of these individually, you tab to the field where you can arrow up and down to change it. Zero three seven reverse CW waiting. Zero three seven reverse CW waiting. Zero three eight bug key function. Zero three eight bug key function. See how nice this is set up. It's really, really well done. Zero three nine reverse dot and dash keying. Zero three nine reverse dot and dash keying. Zero four zero make up DWN key function. Zero four zero make up DWN key function. That's if you want to use the microphone as a paddle. If you don't have a keyer paddle. Zero four one auto CWTX when keying in SSD. Zero four one auto CWTX when keying in SSD. Zero four two frequency correction for SSD to CW change. Zero four two frequency correction for SSD to CW change. Now let's arrow or let's tab to that now and and to see what what we can do there. Let's tab twice now that we have this focused. List view off. Off. Up. Up. On. Arrowing down or on. Arrowing back up. Let's turn it back off. Off. Because we don't want that. A shift tab backwards twice now and get back to that. List view zero four two frequency correction for SSD to CW change. Okay, let's see if there's any more in the CW grouping. Arrowing down. Zero four three no break and while adjusting key and speed. Zero four three no break and while adjusting key and speed. Let's see what we get there. Let's tab to that field. List view off. On. Off or on. Arrowing down turns that on. Let's arrow back off. up to turn it off. List view zero four three no break and while adjusting key and speed. Okay, that's everything in the CW group. Okay, so that's the way this works. Really, really nice. That's all we're going to do for this time. And if you have any questions, again, just write to n3ain at hotmail.com, and I'll try to sort it out better for you. Okay, I think that should explain it, though. But if you do have any questions, I'll still help you further. With that, that's it for this one. This is Joe Bogwist, N3AIN at Hotmail.com, saying 73, and enjoy your 590. Hello, everyone. I'm Joe Bogwist, N3AIN at Hotmail.com, welcoming you to Radio in the Dark, this time part five of the Kenwood TS590 tutorials. Well, last time, as you remember, we looked at the main menus and their names and how to adjust everything with the computer. This time we're still using the computer to control the radio, but this time we're looking at the multi-function menus, as in the ones that would have dual controls if you were to use the control panel, such as the button that does the mic gain also does the carrier level, or the one that does the power level also turns your monitor on and off, your monitor for your microphone to hear it in the speakers. So we're going to be looking at how to go through them with the computer and how to adjust them. This is really nice too. It's set up really well with the software. So without any further delay, let's get started by powering up the radio. Let's go to the ARCP 590 software and open it and then hit the space bar to connect. Start menu, internet. Leaving menus, folder view, list view, ARCP 590. Power button. Okay, we're on the power button. It lands right there when you enter on the software. And hit the space bar and the radio should come on. Connect button, power button. And there it is. 
Okay. So let's get started by going through the multifunctions and seeing what they all are. And JAWS will faithfully read them. And as I said, NVDA would do this too, but I just happen to be using JAWS. Connect button. I just tabbed once to the connect button, and if you hit the space bar again here, it would turn the radio off. Menu functions, multi functions, menu functions button. Now, the next tab lands on the menu functions, what we explored last time. So let's arrow down to the multi functions. Multi functions button. Okay, now we're focused on that, and let's tab all the way through them until it cycles back to the first one again. Attenuator preamplifier, attenuator button. Here's the attenuator button. Now, to toggle that, all you have to do is press the space bar. Or the enter key would do the same thing. Preamplifier button. There's the preamp. Same thing, space bar or enter key would toggle that back and forth. Send antenna, send button. There's the send antenna. Antenna one, two button. Antenna tuner button. I don't have to repeat this. I'm sure you can understand JAWS. Now to get to uh, go through all these, I'm, I'm just tabbing. Antenna tuning button. Now the antenna tuning, that's a multi-function. I'll show you how we do that. We just hit the space bar, just like all the others, and it tunes the antenna. Receiving antenna button. There's the receiving antenna, which I don't want to go into because I don't have a separate antenna hooked up for receiving. Drive out button. Again, I'm just tabbing to go through these. Functions, speech processor button. Noise blanker button. Vox button. ATC button. Keying button. ATC off button. Emergency frequency button. Voice CW message. Start recording channel one button. Now this is how you would record a CW message. You have four channels to record it. Let's say there was a field day contest going on or you were in any other kind of a contest for CW only and you wanted to record your message out and you would just record it and then play it back over and over and over again until somebody answered your call and then of course go through the proper exchange for the contest. This saves you from having to send it over and over manually. Of course you can do the same thing with a phone message. That way you, do, you can save your throat if you're in a long contest. All you have to do then is of course uh, give the exchange after somebody comes back to your call. Start playback channel 1 button. Here's your playback. Start recording channel 2 button. Start playback channel 2 button. Start recording channel 3 button. See everything is grouped just like the other menus were. Start playback channel 3 button. Start recording channel 4 button. Start playback channel 4 button. Start saving constant recording button. Start playback constant recording button. Now that's the constant recording button. If you don't use channel 4 to record an outgoing message, you can set this up to record the last 30 seconds or so of whatever is coming in to the receiver, and then you can play that back. Direct entry, direct entry button. That's where your direct entry is if you wanted to direct enter a frequency. Mode, LSD, USD button. CW, CWR button. FSK, FSKR button. FM button. Data button. Auto mode button. Faux memory, faux equals faux B button. See, all I'm doing is tabbing to get from one of these to the other. Faux, faux B button. Split button. There's your split. Memory, faux button. There's your memory VFO. Store memory channel button. Scan, scan button. Set up scan group button. Set up slow scan button. Now this is how you would set up your scan group or your scanning. You would tab to this and enter on it and then it would give you more options to set this up. Visual scan button. Quick memory, quick memory button. Store quick memory button. Band, 1.8 megahertz button. Now, here are all the bands. This is 160 meters. And if I tab again, it'll go to 7580. 3.5 megahertz button, 7 megahertz button, 10 megahertz button, 14 megahertz button, 18 megahertz button, 21 megahertz button, 24 megahertz button, 28 megahertz button, 50 megahertz button, general coverage button, tune combo box one, tune up button. Now, if I hit the space bar or enter key on here, here, it would start tuning up, as in scanning up the spectrum. Tune down button. Or this is your scan down button. Fine button. That's a fine tuning button. What happens there is if you turn that on, 
the tuning will become much slower. Frequency lock button. TF set button. Multi CH combo box one. Multi CH up button. Multi CH down button. Red zit, red check box not checked. Zit check box checked. Red zit tune down button. Red zit tune up button. See, there's your XIT. RIT. Red zit clear button. There's the clear button to clear those. DSP filter, if filter AB, if filter A radio button checked. There's your filters. This is These are your IF filters. If you wanted to check filter B, now you would just arrow down. If filter B radio button checked. And there's B. You can set these independently of each other. Let's go back to A, wide open. If filter A radio button checked. RX filter button. There's your receive filter. DSP filter, low cut down button. Low cut up button. Low cut down button. Now let's uh, see what happens here. I arrowed down to the low cut up. Low cut up button. Let's hit the space bar. No, let's try to enter on it. Low cut up button. Okay, I guess we can't. Let's tab to uh, the next field. High cut down button. All right, it is changing it. The space bar is changing it, but to change the higher low cut, you have to hold the space bar down. Low cut up button. As opposed to just tapping it for the other ones. Let's go back up. High cut down, low cut up button. Low cut down button. Let's widen it back out again. Now you probably can't hear the radio because I'm using a headset mic, but it is on. Low cut up button. High cut down button. Low cut up button. High, high cut up button. Okay, this is the way it would work, exactly the way it would work if you were controlling the radio remotely. Noise reduction. Noise reduction off radio button checked. There's the noise reduction. Now... If I wanted to turn that on, I would just arrow down. Noise reduction one radio button checked. And it would go to the NR1. Arrowing down one more time would go to NR2. Noise reduction two radio button checked. And let's turn it back off by arrowing up twice. Noise reduction off radio button checked. And again, you get your low beep when any functions turn off. Beep cancel. Beep cancel off radio button checked. Just tab to the beat cancel. Tabbing again gives us this. Notch, notch off radio button checked. Gain squelch, RF gain left right slider, 100. Notch, auto notch radio button checked. Notch off radio button checked. Now to turn that on or off, I arrowed up, down or up. Now let's tab again. Gain squelch, RF gain left right slider, 100. Here's your RF gain. I have that at 100. And to adjust that up or down, I would hit the arrow key or the page up, page down keys to turn the RF or AF volume up or down. F gain left right slider 11. And tabbing there gives you the AF gain. That's it's set at 11 right now. Mute checkbox not checked. Now, if you wanted to mute the whole radio here, all you have to do when you're highlighting the mute button is the space bar that toggles the mute on or off. Squelch left right slider 13. There's the squelch. Tabbing to that. Tab once again gives us RX monitor checkbox not checked. The receive monitor. If we check that, we'd hear our voice in the speaker if we were talking into the radio microphone. Once we set the level of it. Power button. And there's your power button. Connect button. And your connect. Menu functions mode. And connect button. we're power back button. to where we started from. So that's the way all that works. Okay, I just had to add one more thing. The keying button in the menus. I found out what that does and it's really cool. You can type in a message, whatever it is you want to send in CW and you hit enter and it sends it. Spaces properly, properly in everything. Between words it spaces just right and all. It's, amazing. it's really cool. And you can log that and save it to a log and you can just keep sending it over and over again. Or you can type something new that is really a nice function. I never knew that. I, I never saw anything like that. That's something that I never experienced. So I just wanted to add that to this tutorial and to this part. So that's, that's a really neat feature. That's all we have for this time. 
We'll explore more in part six. So until then, this is Joe Bogus. Good DX and have fun with your 590. Hello, folks. I'm Joe Bogwist, N3AIN at Hotmail.com, welcoming you to another edition of Radio in the Dark, this time part six of the Kenwood TS590 tutorials. Today, we're going to talk about two things, quick menus and storing data in the quick memory and long-term memory channels. This radio has 87 menu presets and it might be a little daunting to find the right group that you want if you are using the just the control panel to control the radio. So what Kenwood has is something that's really handy. It's called quick menus and you can turn that on and store data and only those menus that you want to be seen and then you won't see all those other ones. This helps make things a lot easier to find things. So let's do that first. So to store quick menus, all we have to do is first go into menu mode by pressing the menu button. That's the second button in from the right in the very bottom row of the radio. And it just happens to be at menu 00 of these 87. And we don't want to store that. I want to put number menu number 6 in the quick menu. So I'm going to arrow to it or scroll to it by turning the multi channel knob till it gets to 6. And there's number 6. Now to store this in quick menus. All I have to do to enter it is press the frequency lock button. That's just to the left of the main tuning dial in the bottom row. And what you'll hear is a high beep when you press that. And just like that, menu 6 now and its setting is in quick menu mode. The next one I want to put in is number 9. That's the one that you can use to turn the chattiness of the voice guide off if you want to. So let's scroll to number 9 now by turning the multi-channel knob three times to number 9. Zero, nine on. To store that again I press the frequency lock button and there we are it's stored. Now to enter quick menu mode to show what's in it you press the megahertz button. That's the button in the bottom row just to the right of the main tuning dial. And you hear a high beep. Now, if I turn the multi-channel knob, it will just go from number 6 to number 9. You'll hear this. Zero, six, two. Zero, nine, on. Zero, six, two. And there you have it. Now, only menu number 6 and number 9 show up. Now, to delete these, all we have to do is clear everything like this. First, I'll turn the menu mode off. I'm not sure if you have to do that first or not, but I'm going to do it just to be on the safe side. Turning that off by pressing the menu button, you get a long high beep. Now, let's turn it back on again. Menu zero, six, two. Now, number six is showing up. To get rid of that, we just press the frequency lock button again and I think that gets rid of it. Now let's go to number nine, Zero, nine on. by turning the multi-channel knob and pressing the frequency lock button again. And there, now that got rid of both of them I think. Now to see if they're there, if I turn quick menu mode on and they're not there or there's nothing in it, you will get a CW word that says check, C-H-E-C-K. Let's try it. Zero, six, two. Zero, seven, one. Okay, there you go. They're all gone. I tried number seven too, just to see if there was anything stored for that one. And what we heard, for those of you who are not fast enough in CW or don't know CW, 
that was the word check. And what that means is there's nothing in that stored in that quick menu. There is nothing stored for that particular menu. Okay, so that's all there is to it. That's all there is to setting up and removing quick menus. By the way, I just checked it and you don't have to go out of menu mode to delete these. You can stay in it until you're done. Okay, now let's add some memories in the long-term memory channel. There are 110 memory channels in this radio that you can store data in. There's what's known as the conventional memory channels and there's the quick memory channels. The conventional memory channels are channels that you might want to store stuff long term in. For instance, let's say you have a schedule on a certain frequency with a bunch of your friends and you want to be able to get to that frequency quickly. So you can put it in any one of the 99 memory preset channels. Or let's say you have a net that you check into. You could store that in there. Or let's say maybe you have a 10 meter repeater that you want to store. This will store all the information complete with the PL tones that you need or the CTCSS frequency or whatever it is that you want. It puts everything in there so you won't have to go ahead and program that 10 meter FM frequency with the PLs again and everything when you go back to it. Okay, now let's add some data to the memory channels. There are 99 conventional memory channels and there are up to nine quick memory channels that you can store data in with this radio. They're numbered 00 to 99 as in the conventional memories and you can set up to 0, 0 to 9 memories in the quick memory channels. Or as the English fellow that did the manual on the Active Elements website would say, conventional memory not not to 99. Not not. 0 is not not. I don't know why it's not, but it's not. Well anyway, that's my editorial. So to do that, the first thing we have to do is we're going to, well, first of all, let's decide what we're going to store. So the first thing I want to do is select the frequency I want to put in memory number 00 or naught naught. What I want to put in there is, just for the sake of showing you how to do it, is our good old CHU time station from Canada. So I've already selected the frequency and that is Three point three three zero zero zero, and the mode AM. I have AM selected, so let's put that in memory number zero zero. To do that, I have to press the memory in button, which is the second button in from the left on the third row, just to the right of the tuning dial. Okay, now it says memory in zero zero blank because there's nothing in here now. If I want to enter this frequency for CHU in here, I just press it again and I get a long beep and now it's in there. Now what we get memory in zero zero three point three three zero zero Now what we get when we press the button again is the memory preset that's in double zero and that's CHU Canada. And there it is. Now not to be outdone by CHU Canada will allow WWV equal time, excuse the pun, by putting it in memory channel one. So let's do that now. 
So the first thing I have to do is select the frequency. For WWV, at this time of day, it's the middle of the afternoon, I'm going to select 15 megahertz because that's where I'll be able to hear it. So let's go to 15 megahertz. I can enter that quickly by pressing the enter key enter. and typing in 15 on the control pad of the control panel. And then again, hitting enter. And there we are. Let's see if we can hear it. Uh, there's good old WWV. Okay, now to put that in channel one, as if you remember, we already had something in double zero. So to put that in memory one, we now press the memory button, which allows us to scroll through the memory channels. Memory in zero, zero, three, point three, three, zero, zero, zero. Now memory zero, zero is again highlighted. If I pressed the memory button again, it will override that frequency and put in WWV. So I don't want to do that. So I'm going to scroll now. I'm in memory scroll mode. And now to scroll, I just turn the multi-channel control but, uh, knob up one and it'll go to memory one and it will show that it's blank. Zero, one, blank. Okay, I hope you heard that. It said zero, one, blank. Now to enter the frequency I have selected in this channel, I just press the memory button again. And there's a long beep. And now WWV is in here. Now to be able to scroll back and forth between these two frequencies that I have in memory, I have to press the channel VFO button. In this case, I have to go into channel mode and that button is in the third row, just the first button to the right of the main tuning dial. Pressing this button toggles between VFO and channel mode. So now I'm in channel mode, so I will now scroll between CHU and WWV by turning the multi-channel -con control knob and you'll hear the both of them. Here we go. At the tone, 21 hours, 58 minutes, coordinated... And there you have it. And that's how to set memories in the conventional memory presets. Okay, now let's clear these memories, one and then the other. First, let's clear zero. Uh, to do that, we have to again press the channel button, the channel slash VFO button. That's the VFO. Okay, channel double zero is selected now. To clear it, I have to just press the clear button. That's just to the left of the zero. And there you go. You get a long beep and it goes back to the VFO. Now, if I press the channel button, it will say double zero is blank. Actually, it doesn't. That What it does is it gives you a triple beep and that means there's nothing in here. Now, if I press the memory in button, It says memory zero zero is blank. Now let's clear the next one. Okay, now let's clear the memory preset of WWV that's in channel one. To do that, we have to press the channel button, the channel slash VFO button.
and it says 15 megahertz. And now to clear that, all we have to do is press the clear button. That's the button in the bottom row of the 12 digit keypad, just to the left of the zero. That's the clear button. And we press that. And you get a long beep and the rig goes back to the VFO that you were in. And that memory now is cleared. Now to show that they're both cleared, let's go into memory scroll mode. Memory in zero, zero, blank. Now to memory scroll mode, we, we just press that button once. That's again the second button in. Um, in that third row, uh, just to the right of the tuning dial. Now, if I arrow up and down or turn the multi-channel control knob up and down between the memories, it will show that zero is blank and one is blank. You'll hear that. P nine zero zero blank zero one blank. Okay, and that's all there is to it. What you did here too was P uh, first, but that was going into uh, uh, some of the other type of memories. I turned the knob to the left by accident first, but that's the way it works. That's how you put the conventional memories in the radio. By the way, those P memory channels one through nine, I think they're to set up scan groups but I'm not going to go into that. Okay, now let's set a couple of quick memories. These are memory presets that you might want to retain only for a short time. Let's say you're going back and forth between two DX stations that are calling CQ and working pileups and you want to go back to them and check them every once in a while and try to get into the pileup and you want to toggle between doing that and talking to somebody else that you're just talking to on the air or whatever reason you might want to check a frequency but you don't want to keep that frequency in there long term that you would put in the quick memory all you have to do to do that is press the quick memory in button that's the first button in the fourth row just to the right of the main tuning dial and you get a long beep when you press that and then the memory is in there. In this case, it's a frequency on 75 meters. Quick memory, zero, B, 3.81820. It's 3.81820. It said the, v, the VGS guide said quick memory zero, and then it gave the frequency. Now let's put another one in. Let's go to 40 meters now and put one in from 40 meters in channel quick memory one. First I'll go to 40 meters. Seven point three zero three three zero. Seven point three zero three three zero. if you didn't hear that. And to pre put the quick memory in here now, all I have to do is press the quick memory button again, and it should be in there. Quick memory one, B, seven point three zero three three zero. And there it is. Quick memory in channel one is a forty meter frequency. Okay, now to scroll through these, all I have to do now is turn the multi-channel control knob and it will scroll between these two frequencies that I put in here. I'll show you what that sounds like. I'll turn the rig volume up too so you can hear what's going on in the radio as I scroll between these two. Okay, and there we have it. And if I added one in channel three in the quick memory, 
what it would do is, is it would bump up the last one that I put in to channel 4 and it would keep doing that until there were no more channels left and then it would overwrite the one that I did first. So that's the way you add quick memories. Okay, that's all I'm going to cover now. That's it for Radio in the Dark for the Kenwood TS-590 tutorials for now. If I come up with anything else while I have the radio, I'll do another tutorial. But for now, that's it. So I hope that you enjoyed this and I hope it helps you understand the radio better. There are a lot of things I didn't cover, but as I said, those things are in the manual that's read from the Active Elements website and there's a link to that on the Handy Hams website in your members only section. You can get to that and listen to the English bloke reading the manual and it's very good. He does a very good job and he too describes where buttons are and everything else. And he does the whole manual. He talks about setting up scan groups and doing all kinds of things that I'm not going to go into here. But with this this is going to be enough basic information for you to be able to learn that on your own. If you have any questions on any of this, again, my email address is n3ain at hotmail.com. Thank you very much for Radio in the Dark and the TS-590 tutorials. I'm Joe Bogwist. Good DX and 73. Hi everyone, I'm Joe Bogwist and this is a Radio in the Dark Kenwood TS-590 Extra using the voice guide to tell you what the ALC reading is. This is a little known secret of the TS-590. I never knew you could do this myself until just a little while ago. But it's a great feature when you are totally blind and can't see the display screen. Now you can set up your ALC and compression readings to, for your microphone without any help. Before I tell you how to do this, let me explain a few things. Of course, as you know, by default, the TS-590 is set to use the PF1 key with the voice guide to tell you the frequency readout and the PF2 key gives you the S meter reading of the radio. If you have the special Kenwood microphone with the keypad on the front of it, you have four PF key settings. Menus number 79 and 80 adjust the PF1 and PF2 keys on the control panel of the radio, respectively. And number 81 through 84 allow you to adjust the PF keys on the microphone with the keypad on it. Number 85 and number 86 allow you to change the function of the up-down buttons on that microphone. And uh, the menu numbers go from 100 to 130, and then it skips and goes from 200 to 208, and then off. Through menu 100 to 130, will change the function of either PF key to give you all kinds of things, like you can change one of them to turn the Vox on and off, or to adjust antenna A to antenna B, or to change from VFOA to B, whatever you want to do. But we're only concerned with the functions that the voice guide will use. And those two functions right now are the ability to read the S meter and the ability to adjust ALC and compression level. If you only have the Kenwood 590 and not the special microphone, you only have two PF keys. So you have to sacrifice one thing for another. In other words, you have to eliminate being able to have the S meter reading read out in order to get the ALC reading. But that's okay, because once you have the ALC set, you can leave it alone as long as you don't change microphones. And then you can go back to changing the uh, PF2 key to give you the uh, S meter reading again. And you can leave it that way. So here's how you do it. You go into the menus on the 590 and go to menu number 80. And that allows you to change the PF2 key function. In menu number 80, you change PF2 from 201 to 202. Then that will allow you to have the ALC readout by the voice guide when you talk into the microphone. Here's what that sounds like. 
Okay, to demonstrate this, here we are on the 10 meter band because it's dead, and I'm using a dummy load. Always use a dummy load when you're testing like this because you don't want to bother anybody. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to do this. I have the rig on now, and first we're going to go into the menus by pressing the menu button uh, so you can hear exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to put the recorder up by the speaker, and we press the menu button. Menu 80201. And that's menu 80. And it's now at setting on 201. We're going to change that to 202. 201, as I said, makes the PF2 key tell you the S meter reading. That's the function of it with setting 201. We're going to go up to 202 now, which will allow us to read the ALC with the voice guide. 202. Okay, now we get out of menu mode. And now, when I press the mic button and I talk and I hit the PF2 key, this is what will happen. Hello, test one, two. One, two. One, two, three. One, four. Hello, test one, two, three. Okay, now that's the ALC. That's the ALC reading. Now, if I talk too loud, the ALC will exceed the limit and the VGS1 will say over. Hello. A, over. Okay, here, see what it said? It said A, meaning ALK, over. Okay, you don't want to go over. You don't want to have your mic gain set so that you're going over on the ALK because then you'll be splattering all over the place. And for best audio, you want the ALK to just start barely moving. Um, let's try it again without whistling and talking normally with the transmit keyed. Hello, test N3 AIN, testing 1, 2, 3, 2, 1. A, 0. Hello, test A, 1, over. 2, 3. Oh, that went over. 1, 2, A, 3, two, one, 1, 4. Okay, so there you go. It says A and then the number. And now if you want to test the compression uh, for your processor, um, turn the processor on, and we'll see what happens now. Hello, test A, 1, 2, 3. Seven. 1, 2, 3, A, 4, 5. Eight. Hello, A, 1, 1, 3. Hello, A, test one, zero. two, three. Okay, the compression level should not exceed about 10 dB. So, uh, I'm really doing okay because I normally don't yell into the microphone and I keep it about four or five inches away from my mouth and it works perfectly that way. I'm using the Heil Gold line, by the way, in the wide element position. Now, if I changed and I used a handheld microphone for this radio, I would have to set the gain quite a bit back because the handheld doesn't need nearly the drive that the um, bigger um, gold line does. So that's the way it works. By the way, if this doesn't work when you try it, make sure the meter type is selected properly. That toggles back and forth using the drive button. You just tap that button if it didn't work and then try it again and it probably will. And if you'd like the explanation of how this is done from the UK Active Elements website, you can download the complete Kenwood manual from there. There's a link to it on HandyHam's website. Just go to Active Elements link, click on that, and then go to Kenwood and click on that, and you'll get the complete manual read by the UK Active Elements website. It's a great manual. That's how I got all my information. The section in the Kenwood manual from the Active Elements website describing this is track number 59. That will help you a lot. And if you have any further questions besides that, you can contact me at n3ain at hotmail.com, and I'll try to help you further if you need it. Thanks a lot, and this has been a Kenwood 590 Extra 73s.